Many of the vehicles which we discuss in this series in particular do tend to be in the field of undervalued or maybe less successful performance cars. Exotics and supercars, if you will. And this is one of those, but it's one which definitely doesn't get anywhere near the recognition that it deserves, given that small super boutique sports cars and supercars can very easily just be bad. Just straight up bad. Not worth the money, not very well produced, not very well made, and not even all that impressive as far as performance goes. There are a dime a dozen. This, though, is not one of those cars because of the mind behind it. Because this car is, of course, as you saw from the title, an Ascari. Now, Ascari is a brand which is fairly well known in the performance car world, but at the same time, it's a brand which doesn't really need to shout about its own ability. And I like that. They're a relatively small manufacturer with a handful of models, but the thing which ties all of their models together is that if you really consider it and compare them to their rivals, they're very impressive. And in fact, more often than not, they're better than many of them, if not most of them. And yet still, Ascari would not be most people's first thought when you think of good supercars. Why is that? Well, that's a discussion for another time, really, but I would say it's partially because they don't blow their own trumpet. They just get the job done quietly, efficiently, and allow their cars to speak for themselves. Now, this particular model is one of the earliest models which Ascari has made, and it's also one of the least known. And it comes as kind of a two-parter, if you will. It originated as the Ascari FGT concept. It was released in 1995. And then the concept of the car, in a very literal sense, they literally used the concept car for racing. It was turned into a race car, and it even won an event at Silverstone in its very first season of debut. However, they tried to race it again, such as at the Le Mans 24-hour race, unfortunately, it wasn't quick enough to qualify for that, but they tried to race it later on, and it started to become less successful, other teams were getting quicker, and they were pretty much staying the same. However, the essential concept was still a very good one, in a similar way to some other manufacturers which I also love, such as Mosler, with their various evolutions of the base concept, which made them successful and then was refined over the years. That's exactly the same for Ascari. Because what happened was, the FGT, which is from these pictures the ones with the covered headlamps, that's how you can tell the difference between the cars, or one of the easiest ways, was then refined into the Ascari Ecosse. Now this car is very low level production, there are a couple of different engine types, but the thing which holds them all in common is how good it is. And also, how good it is for a car which doesn't really have any chatter online. It's not a well discussed supercar. And I would say that it is a supercar. It bears some visual resemblances to vehicles such as the Jaguar XJR15, or perhaps a Noble M12, or various others. And there's a reason for that, because the guy who designed the car was a certain Lee Noble. Yeah, that Lee Noble. The Lee Noble who went on to make some of the best track day road legal sports cars you can buy such as the M12 and the M400, and a couple of pretty nice concepts by the name of the M14 and the M15. This, though, was an earlier effort, one of his very early forays into this concept, which he wanted to achieve. Now, this is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car. It's very lightweight. It only weighs 1,250 kilos, which is essentially similar to a race car already, and it comes with, as I said, a couple of different engine options. Now, one of the best ones, if not the best, was a 4.7-litre V8, which put out over 400 horsepower. Now that engine makes the car capable of 200 miles per hour. At least that's what it's claimed. And the 0 to 60 time is a fraction over four seconds. So for that power level, and even to be honest, for its weight, because the weight is good, but it's not phenomenal. That really is impressive power. And that once again brings me back to what I was talking about at the start of the video about Ascari as a brand. This is something which they've pretty much always done. If you consider the FGT and the Ecosse, then the successor to this car, the much better known KZ1, still undervalued though, and then consider the refined version of that car, the notorious A10, and what do they all have in common, besides the badge? Well, consider how fast they are for the amount of power that they have. 
the raw spec, if you will, not even just in terms of power, but across the board. The FGT and the Ecosse, as we just said, from a roughly 400 horsepower engine, gets 200 miles per hour. Then the KZ1, which is a heavier car, a bigger car, a better equipped car, more of a traditional idea of a GT style supercar rather than a pure track car, but also a 200 mile per hour machine from a 500 horsepower engine. Now, 200 miles per hour doesn't sound like a huge amount now, but that car was produced over a decade ago, and that is a lot less power than many other supercars had to go only three or four miles per hour more than that. Stuff like your SLRs and your Carrera GTs had well over 600 horsepower, even something like an MC12. This had 500, the KZ1 that is. Then they refined again, of course, with the A10, my personal favorite Ascari. Again, only a 625 horsepower car, which is a lot, of course, but not really for a supercar, especially if you look at what it's going up against. The Mosler MT900 GTR, for instance, has 600 horsepower. The Gumper Apollo has well over 650. Of course, the Gumper Apollo S, even more so. And a variety of others easily at least match, if not outdo, the A10. And yet, it's faster than pretty much all of them around the track. 2.6 seconds to 60. A quoted speed of around between 210 and 220 miles per hour, depending on downforce. This is something which Ascari does well. Their cars go way beyond what you would assume that they would be capable of based on their basic raw numbers. And I have to love them for that. And this car immediately proved, even taking a concept car and turning it into a racing machine, that it had that raw potential. And we saw that refined into the much better known and much more widely appreciated Noble. Now it's pretty cool that unlike many of the cars in this series, this car in effect, through its children, if you want to look at it that way, at the very least its spiritual successors, that it had some semblance of respect for what it achieved, even though in an indirect way. Because if you love Nobles and respect them, by proxy, you are also respecting this car, because it's the same essential concept. But at the same time, this is kind of where it all began for him, for Lee Noble and for what would become Noble, and also the legacy of Ascari supercars. So it's definitely worth a look, and it's a car which doesn't get anywhere near the respect and the chatter which it deserves. So that's it overall for this particular instalment. Certainly a worthwhile car to have here, I think. And of course, if you'd like to check out others in this series, you can click through to see the full list of those at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.